This is Mike Mozart of Jeepers Media on YouTube, and I've got a secret. It's a deep, dark secret. I'm telling you, you're going to be one of the first to find out. You know this SOPA law they're trying to pass, stop online piracy? Well, guess what? The same people that are trying to get the law passed and to put up like $100 million in lobbying costs to get this law passed so they can control the Internet are the same people that distributed the file sharing software. That's right. They're the ones that actually profited from the distribution of the software and taught people how to use it and then turned around and sued people like you for billions of dollars. They did. I'm not kidding. Just look up Joel Tenenbaum. They sued him for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Poor college kid. They sued single moms for millions for downloading 24 songs. Hey, Google the name Jamie Rassett Thomas. Look at that. They sued and got $1.9 million judgment out of this single mom, and you are next with SOPA. They're going to sue you when SOPA passes. They want to make even a little bit of copyright infringement a felony online. If you do like a little karaoke song, or you have your wedding's first dance, you have a copyrighted song, they want to make you a felon and put you in jail and sue you for hundreds of thousands of dollars. They've done it before to little innocent kids. And you think, oh, I'm not in the United States, I'm fine. No, they're passing this law so they can send in the troops to arrest you and shut down um, websites in your country, too. Uh, no kidding. Hey, if you don't believe me, look at this article. British student faces extradition to U.S. over copyright infringement. A 23-year-old British computer student faces possible extradition to the U.S. for linking to copyrighted content on his website. He didn't even post copyrighted material. The student, Richard O'Dwyer, was accused of copyright infringement after setting up a website, TV Shack, which had links to thousands of movies and TV shows, but did not host them. He just linked to them. But our government, under Obama, sent in the U.S. Department of Immigration. They're insisting that the U.K. ship him to the United States so we can put him in prison for five years. And what he did is not illegal in the U.K. But our government is insisting, and they may even storm England to get him, to bring him to justice here. They're going to use this to take over the internet and shut down sites like YouTube and Twitter and all your favorites so they can control it so you have to watch their lame-ass worthless TV shows. But you know what? I've got the secret to stopping it and you're going to help me do it, right? Now don't disappoint me, you've got to do your part. Because once the lawmakers find out about this, I think they're going to stop that law. But if you're listening to those hearings, you know, it's all about online piracy. Like downloading movies and TV shows and stuff like that. But who do you think... But, but come here, but come here. Who do you think really caused all that piracy, huh? Was it all these kids? No. They needed the tools to do it. Who distributed those tools? Guess who? CBS Television? The Cena division of CBS had almost the exclusive distribution of things like LimeWire, Kazaa, Morpheus, BitTorrent, Azurius, Vuz. CNET, Download.com, and ZDNet are divisions of CBS Interactive which is owned by CBS Viacom. CNET distributed these little widgets that you would click on on those sites. CNET would host the software on their own servers after they've tested it for effectiveness, after their editors approved all the copy and all the pictures, after they tested it thoroughly to make sure it worked perfectly. Then they'd allow it on their site, and they'd give people this widget, because the more downloads that appear on CNET's charts, because at one time CNET was a very popular site, and they wanted to be on those charts, so people say, ooh, the most popular download of the day, I want to be there. Right now you're saying, hey, a lot of other sites had that software besides CNET. Oh, yeah, they did. It was co-branded with CNET. That's right. They made deals where they would distribute their content on sites like AOL, MSNBC, ESPN, Disney's Go.com. Hey, now it's time to wake up. These SOPA supporters, most of them distributed the file sharing software and taught people how to use it. But before I go on, I have to explain something. File sharing software is perfectly legal. However, under the MGM versus Grokster U.S. Supreme Court ruling, they held that one who distributes a device, you know, the file sharing software, with the object of promoting its use to infringe copyright, as shown by clear expression or other affirmative steps taken to foster infringement, is liable for the resulting acts of infringement by third parties. This is regardless of the device's non-infringing uses. In other words, you can distribute it, but you can't encourage anyone to use it to infringe copyright. And do you know what? CNET and CBS did just that thousands of times. Hey, you SOPA supporting music rights groups, listen up to this. Now, here's one of those ESPN Disney CNET co-branded pages. And what do we see here? One of the MP3 Insider 
file sharing SmackDown tests, something they commonly did uh, for quite a few years. Why did they use Britney Spears and Beatles and known artists? Disney, you put it on your ESPN site for the better part of a decade? Encouraging people to download and copy copyrighted materials? Why did you do it, Disney? Why? It doesn't make any sense. But why would Disney even have their own branded piracy software? Branded for Go.com, one of their portals. That's right, the Walt Disney Company that's plowing millions into getting SOPA passed has a ghost of file sharing past. Their own branded file sharing service to get free MP3s branded the Go Network. And they use Scour as one of their search engines. And what do you know? They were suing Scour at the exact same freaking time. They were suing it and using it to help people procure songs. Disney, I thought you supported SOPA. That's right, guys. Disney's one of the key supporters of SOPA and enjoyed a decade-long distribution deal with CNET for all those downloads. Another one of the key supporters of SOPA, Warner. The Warner Corporation distributed this software through their AOL portal for years and made a bundle doing it. They distributed Kazaa, for God's sakes, BitTorrent. They did them all. AOL? Oh, no, you didn't, AOL, because you were part of Time Warner. They're leading the charge for SOPA. And did you know that the co-founder of CNET, Shelby Bonney, was actually on the board of directors and the chairman of the board of CNET and on the board of directors of Warner Music Group at the same time, distributing all this file sharing software while Warner was actually distributing this material through their AOL portal. It, it just doesn't make any sense. Why would they do that? Why would... All of the entertainment companies that seem to distribute all this software and encourage people to use it to infringe copyrights when no one else was really distributing this software. And AT&T Broadband Online was in partnership with Comcast. What did they distribute? No, not Kazaa. Yep, that's right. They offered all the co-branded software downloads of CNET, including Kazaa. 281 million downloads. And don't forget that CNET had their own built-in search engine. That's right, it was used for finding MP3s. And to make it even easier, you didn't even have to leave CNET site. Nope, nope, nope. They actually helped you out by suggesting people like the Beatles or Beck's Loser song. That's right. CBS CNET's Search.com offered the easiest way to find free MP3s. Look at this. They even show you how to get Beck's song Loser, one of the ones that Joel Tenenbaum was sued over. And look, they had presets for a YouTube, Britney Spears, and Madonna, and returned results like this that were a simple right-click away and downloaded right from CNET's own cozy little site so you never had to leave. You can get music for Rush, Incubus, Lenny Kravitz, and more. They maintained this for years as a piracy system. And you simply just push find, and it returned embedded links that you would right-click on and download the songs directly from CNET. They made hundreds of millions of dollars doing this, guys. Hundreds of millions of dollars while suing kids for using it exactly as they instructed. You got a lot of splaining to do, CBS. A lot of splaining. We can't wait for Discovery. NBC was a big investor in CNET. Bet you didn't know that. And Paul G. Allen from Microsoft, he was a big investor in CNET. And one of the biggest distributors of file sharing software co-branded with CNET with all the reviews was Microsoft the MSN network, and the Microsoft website itself. Look at these examples. And they co-branded all of CNET's content, including those product reviews, using real songs to find out which was the most effective way to steal the music. Of course, real titles, real names, and they covered Grokster, Morpheus, Kazaa, BitTorrent, everyone. They used known copyrighted songs. They used known copyrighted material to test and show the effectiveness of this software. They left those reviews up for over a decade, linking directly to the software downloads. What do you think the intent was? Can you say inducement? And, of course, LimeWire. LimeWire, too? And Microsoft also distributed the content directly from Microsoft.com co-branded and made distribution deals for a profit with Kazaa. No way. Well, Microsoft themselves distributed BitTorrent right on their MSN site. They featured it, their proud investment. It's strange how the content licensing partners for BitTorrent just happened to be most of the people supporting SOPA. 
and they know it was used for piracy, the CNET writers admitted that it was the king of piracy online. That you could use it to procure copyrighted materials. They advertise that fact all the time in their editorial copy, with hot links to go download it so you can get the material yourself. And let's not forget that CNET distributed all the DRM removal equipment. That's right, Download.com is a division of CNET. And what they did is they distributed DRM removal software for everything. Blu-ray, video games, just about everything. Now, book publishers are some of the biggest supporters of SOPA because there's a lot of piracy of ebooks going on online. Of course there is, because CNET and ZDNet distributed all the DRM removal software to strip the DRM out of those books. That's why there's so much piracy. They offered a cornucopia of DRM removal software for everything. Why would one of the big entertainment companies, CBS Viacom, that's leading the charge for SOPA distribute this material to create an aura of copyright infringement? So when they go in to see these lawmakers like these senators and congressmen, they're going to say, look at all the piracy. There's so much piracy going on. We know because we caused it all to happen ourselves so that we can control the Internet. That's absolutely what happened, and you need to get this video through to every lawmaker in the world. I'm counting on you to do it. And you think that's not going to make a difference? If those lawmakers see this video and the evidence we have, they're going to say, Whoa, these are all the people that sent lobbyists into my office this week about all this piracy. Why the hell have they been distributing this software for a decade as the exclusive distributors? The virtual exclusive distributors. Why would they do such a thing? They're doing it to control the internet, guys. And you have one chance to stop them before this all passes. And this is it. You want to be a hero, you get this to as many lawmakers in your country, attorney general's offices in your state, your senators, congressmen if you're in the United States, or the lawmakers in England, Australia, whatever country you're in. You're going to find out that CNET, ZDNet, you know, that division of CBS, has offices in like 50 countries around the world. There's 50 different entities to sue for your country to recover damages. You have to get this video to every lawmaker in the world, even in your own country, because in your own country, you know, I know your country's cash strapped and they're going to come after you taxpayers like to get more money for their treasuries. Why not just sue the people that distributed the piracy software and caused all the piracy to happen? We've already been contacted by a half a dozen countries. We're giving them all the evidence we got, which is, um, Tens of thousands of pages, actually over 100,000, I think. It's hard to keep count. There's so much evidence. And all this evidence was gleaned from public sources on the Internet. There's no secret hidden documents here. I just asked the lawmakers to, to drag these people into court, show them this evidence and say, why did you do it? How come you're here before us getting us to pass these laws when you were the ones that were the only ones that distributed the software at all and you profited from it? What did you expect was going to happen? They were going to use it to trade baby pictures? Hell no. Their own testimony in court for years in copyright infringement lawsuits said specifically the software was only used for copyright infringement. And they knew it. And they profited from it. And they intended for people to download it and use it for copyright infringement so they could go crawling to these lawmakers and throw hundreds of millions of dollars at them to get laws to control the Internet and take down sites like YouTube and Twitter and Tumblr and all your favorites. And you're not going to let that happen. Alki David, the famous billionaire, has put up millions of dollars. And he's representing artists and writers that got wronged by this. You know what? They're going to get their damages from CNET and CBS. Big time. And we want answers, and we're going to get them. So if you care about your future, you're going to distribute this video, and you're going to make sure every lawmaker sees it. And I want to hear from some of those lawmakers, because we got lots of evidence. And don't forget to rate this video so it's the number one top-rated video of the day. We want to make sure all the lawmakers see this. Don't forget to share this with your friends, because this is your last chance. You only have a few days to stop SOPA, okay? And if the lawmakers see this, I think they're going to go, and put the brakes on immediately. And um, favorite this, because that's another way to get to the top of the charts on YouTube. I'm not putting advertising. I'm not making any money on this. And everything I've shown in this is fair use. If they take this down, this is fair use. And we're certainly going to file against that. But you know what? They're going to try to take it down, because it'll take a week or so to get it back up so they can pass through that SOPA thing. So I want you guys to download this and re-upload it all over the Internet. Change it some. Put some leaders in front of it. Shorten it. Cut it up. Whatever you have to do. Because they're going to do everything they can to take down this information, because that's what they do, and that's what they want SOPA for. Don't forget, CBS Viacom is the number one supporter of SOPA and the number one distributor of piracy software and the number one promoter of it to use it for copyright infringing purposes.
How is that not just totally screwed up? This is Mike Mozart of Jeepers Media on YouTube, and I've got a secret. It's a deep, dark secret. I'm telling you. You're going to be one of the first to find out. You know this SOPA law they're trying to pass? Stop online piracy? Well, guess what? The same people that are trying to get the law passed and to put up like a hundred million dollars in lobbying costs to get this law passed so they can control the internet are the same people that distributed the file sharing software. That's right. They're the ones that actually profited from the distribution of the so copyright infringement, a felony online. If you do like a little karaoke song or you have your wedding's first dance, you have a copyrighted song, they want to make you a felon and put you in jail and sue you for hundreds of thousands of dollars. They've done it before to little innocent kids. And you think, oh, I'm not in the United States, I'm fine. No, they're passing this law so they can send in the troops to arrest you and shut down um, websites in your country too. Uh, no kidding. Hey, if you don't believe me, look at this article. British student faces extradition to U.S. over copyright infringement. A 23-year-old British computer student software and taught people how to use it and then turned around and sued people like you for billions of dollars. They did. I'm not kidding. Just look up Joel Tenenbaum. They've sued him for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Poor college kid. They sued single moms for millions for downloading 24 songs. Hey, Google the name Jamie Rassett Thomas. Look at that. They sued and got $1.9 million judgment out of this single mom, and you are next with SOPA. They're going to sue you when SOPA passes. They want to make even a little bit of worm England to get him to bring him to justice here. They're going to use this to take over the internet and shut down sites like YouTube and Twitter and all your favorites so they can control it so you have to watch their lame-ass worthless TV shows. But you know what? I've got the secret to stopping it, and you're going to help me do it, right? Now, don't disappoint me. You've got to do your part. Because once the lawmakers find out about this, I think they're going to stop that law. But if you're listening to those hearings, you know, it's all about online piracy, like downloading movies and TV shows and stuff like that. But faces possible extradition to the U.S. for linking to copyrighted content on his website. He didn't even post copyrighted material. The student Richard O'Dwyer was accused of copyright infringement after setting up a website, TV Shack, which had links to thousands of movies and TV shows, but did not host them. He just linked to them. But our government under Obama sent in the U.S. Department of Immigration. They're insisting that the U.K. ship him to the United States so we can put him in prison for five years. And what he did is not illegal in the U.K. But our government is insisting, and they may even store